for it, inshallah. It's a very small chapter and uh, we can cover it just like within 45 minutes, inshallah. And after that, we will discuss the DMA questions and then you are free, inshallah. Okay. Okay, so students, you can see the screen, right? Thank you. Okay, so today, inshallah, we're going to talk about exception handling in C sharp. Uh, in this, we are going to talk about how we can handle uh, runtime error. Basically, in C Sharp uh, or in any programming language, there arises broadly like two kinds of errors. One, we call it as a syntax error or compile time error, which is basically an error or uh, that a system or the compiler detects before we execute the program. For an example, if we are using a variable without its declaration. In the sense here, for example, let me say here that I'm gonna say int a is equal to 10 and then I'll say uh, int b is equal to 20 and I'll say then uh, sum is equal to a plus b and uh, I'm going to write console dot write line the sum is now here we see that there is some red marks over here which says the name sum does not exist in the current context fine and when we try to run this program we may stuck up with this error with the sum right uh, that sum is not defined here so there will be a build error and we'd like to continue to run the last successful build and there is building this program or compiling this program to convert into an executable file so that the program will execute and we'll see the output there is an error here and now what is that error is that we are not we uh, did not define the sum variable right the sum does not exist this is an error okay such errors we call it as in syntax error or compile time error Okay, and sometimes we write some uh, function names or let's say that we write some methods names which is not correct. And this is I'm writing here that write line, okay, with L is small, fine, welcome. Now this is again an error. We can see that there is no method write line with a small l for the word line. Okay, this is again a compile time error or we can say a syntax error. Fine, you can see a list of errors over here that the sum does not exist and in line number 100, sum does not exist in line number 101 and there is no write line method in 103 line number 103 so such type of errors we call them as in syntax errors fine so basically we find this one type which is what we call it as in syntax error the other type of error is what is called the the runtime errors which is also called exceptions now these runtime errors arises when uh, at the time of running the program, when the program is executing, that it will not define any error when 
uh, at the time of compiling a program you don't see such kind of you know red line marks over here in visual studio fine and you don't see errors okay list over there for such type of error so and those are called the runtime errors and these are called exceptions so we have a way that if there exist any or there over there comes any exception during running of the program we can handle those exceptions we can handle those errors in in a way that we can take those errors and display a proper message or a take a proper action uh, that what to do if such error comes when the program is running okay so this chapter is about exception handling that how we can deal with such errors right so we are going to talk here the objectives of this chapter is explain the debugging differentiate between compile time error and run time error and exception handling in c sharp using try catch and finally blocks so an introduction here is that uh, i just explain you regarding that the errors how the system uh, you know the the errors are uh, been uh, identified right as in compile time error or in uh, syntax error and error error that is identified during the running of the program which is called the uh, exceptions or run time errors okay now these mistakes which are a compile time mistakes is very simple and easy to identify and and it will not harm the system because it will be identified before the program is executed those compile time errors fine so that simply it takes that the 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 programmer to check for these errors okay before the execution and correct those errors and go ahead with running of the program but in sometimes the program when it goes into the runtime error these runtime errors sometimes lead to the system crash or lead to some uh, incorrect outputs fine uh, so there should be a way that we can deal with such kind of error okay now in that in this case we have something called debugging which is a process of identifying and fixing errors in a software program to ensure that it behaves as in the intended manner that Uh, for for what purpose we have designed this program it behave to give us that purpose and give us that particular output uh, or the results okay so in that case if there is an error identifying those errors and fixing those error is nothing but debugging so in software do development domain such errors are commonly referred as bugs and there are a number of debugging tools or debuggers that can be used for tracing down the uh, the errors in exact piece of code fine to identify the errors and to correct the errors so that the software work as it is intended most of the ides are equipped with such built in debuggers that holds the programmer fix the bug during the development one of this is visual studio we can see in the visual studio that there is some marks the lines which is given over here the red lines and all helping us to ident to 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 identify these errors and to correct them so that we can make correction to them and we can run the program safely and we can get the output okay as intended right so visual studio is an ide the support that the the provides a feature of debugging to identify any errors so the the use of debuggers ensure the systematic approach to problem or error resolution and it will it involves a number of commonly performed activities such as starting pausing and stopping restarting the program and all so we have here for example when we run the program fine we have here debugging uh, that help us in many of these tasks we can start debugging right at some particular point we can start uh, you know stop the debugging we have a step into a step over 
uh, going line by line, find uh, making breakpoints to uh, to perform some to check uh, if there is any errors and so on. Okay, even we can stop the program in between. Okay, so that is what is called debugging process, where the debuggers or the the tools, debugging tools, help us to identify the errors and fix the errors so that the program runs exactly as is it is intended to work. Now, the errors, as I said, like two type of errors, which is a compile time error and a runtime error. A compile time error is all a syntax error, which is detected and displayed to to show that there is a mistake here in some line uh, that uh, you need to identify fine so it is just display an error and it will not create the cs file that is an executable file for the uh, for the assembly file uh, for execution okay it will not create it will just show you these these are the syntax errors for example missing variable names uh, writing uh, the names of the function, pro improper name of the function, okay, uh, misusing some uh, operators, so such kind of errors will be under runtime, uh, sorry, compile time errors. Going ahead, we have something called runtime errors, which is the executable file is generated. It is the file is executed, but during the running of the program, the program stops right and gives us some indication or errors that the program stop are that uh, interrupted and it is being stopped due to some errors fine now such errors will not be identified by the debugger it is during the runtime they come up such errors for example it is like dividing an integer by zero right now, if you divide any number by zero, what is the value? You all know that, right? For example, 10 divided by zero is how much? What is the result of this? Is it zero or one or 10? Sorry. Is it oh, I cannot hear it clearly. It's error. Cannot be divided by zero. Yeah, we cannot divide any number by zero. It is what we call it as an infinity. Fine. Any number division by zero is infinity, or it is an error. Fine. So if something happens in your program during the running of the program in between that uh, some calculations you were doing right in between and you find that that uh, uh, the, the equation came up in such a way that there is a division by zero. Fine. In, in this case, the compiler will not identify during the debugging process. Right. During the execution, such error comes up and it will stop the program without informing and just uh, saying that uh, in a, or it will interrupt the program completely fine. So in that case, we don't know what happened, fine. And something happened inside the program that disturbed the whole program, right? Such error, we call it as a runtime error. Also, for example, if we are trying to access an element uh, out of the bounds of an array, for example, let's say we declare an array of size five. Array A of size five. Now we are trying to access array uh, six, index six, right? We declare a size five. We're trying to access index six, which does not exist, right? This is also an error that we are trying to access an element which does not exist is an error also for example trying to store a value into an array of an incompatible class you declare an integer array and you are trying to store a string value in it is again a runtime error passing parameter that is not in the valid range or value that is you are trying to pass parameters which is not of a similar type to the method 
no this kind of error what you call, what is we call it as in runtime errors or exceptions okay so attempting to use a negative size of an array is again an exception using a null object reference as a legitimate object reference exception or runtime error converting invalid string to a to a number or vice versa then for example i want to convert a string uh, abc right and i say convert dot to int convert dot to int 35 or th sorry 32 abc abc is not an integer value right so trying to convert an a string into a number is again uh, an error. Of course, if it is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 can be converted into integer, but what about ABC cannot be converted into integers. Similarly, accessing character that is out of the bound of the string, then errors are encountered. CSOP typically generates an error message and aborts the program, disturbs the program. Fine. So with Visual Studio IDEO, IDE, sorry, we have some kind of uh, you know help in that case, but it is again an exception. So let's try this. For example, let's say that I have int c is equal to, uh, uh, let's say that I'll say b minus a plus 10 divided by uh, sorry, B, let's say B plus A divided by uh, B minus A. And let me be as 10. Now here the equation is okay. C is equal to B plus A divides by B minus A. B plus A will be 20, B minus A will be zero. Now here comes the division by zero. You don't see any compile time error. You don't see any red mark here to show that there is any mistake because it is not in compile time error. The equation is fine. But during the running of the program, the this problem ap appears of what is called division by zero, right? So I will we'll just put a statement here. Value of C is zero, so let's see. Just a statement, but this statement does not come because this program stops here. Fine, you can check that. So now here we see that the program is stopped here. Fine, and exception unhandled system divide by zero exception attempt to divide by zero. The program stops here. Fine. We don't find any output there. The program will stop here. Okay. And the output screen is empty. We don't have anything in the output screen. It's not working. Right. Why? Because the program has stopped here and there is an exception which is division by zero. Fine. So this is what we call it as a runtime error or an exception. Anything before this, for example, let me say console dot right line of uh, a is equal to 0, so b is equal to 1, a comma b, fine. So now we'll see that the a, b, now we have an exception that we see the output screen a and b has been printed. And then after that, the exception comes where the program did a stop and did not continue working, right? So we're just gonna uh, stop here, right? We cannot do anything at this point. We're gonna stop the program and we see that the program has been stopped, okay? It has been exit now because of the division by zero, fine? So which is what we call it as in a runtime error, okay? Now, how we can handle these runtime error that what we have seen an exception here, right? Division by zero an exception, okay? So these in, in C sharp and also in Java, I think if you have studied Java programming, uh, M250, uh, sorry, M251. 
you have learned about exception. So exception is a condition that caused by runtime error in the program. While the C sharp compiler encounters such errors like division by zero, it creates an exception object and throw that exception object. If the exception object is not caught and handled properly, the compiler will display an error message and will terminate the program. This is what is happening here, right? We are not catching the, any exception. We are not dealing with anything. The program stops here, right? And says there is an exception here, division by zero exception, which is attempt to divide by zero. And the output screen is the first line what we have seen. The program stops here. That means there is an exception generated here. Okay, and this exception, uh, you can see the details of these exception. Click on these detail. You can see the details of this exception. I think it will take to the any website to show that. And uh, yeah, here is an exceptions. Yeah. What is the message? Attempt to divide by zero message. Fine. And uh, it is an exception, but that occurred in this program. Fine. So here, how uh, an, an object is generated, which is this an exception object. Okay. It says an uh, exception unhandled. So we have a uh, a, a, a process here or we have a technique that we can handle these exceptions okay so that the program will not terminate right like this what we have seen the program can be terminated properly in the sense for example if you take the calculator and a system calculator we have let's say for example and i'm just No, in this calculator, if I try to do division by zero, what happens? For example, two divided by zero. No, we have a proper message. The calculator still exists with a proper message that cannot divide by zero. Right? Calculator does not stop here, or there is no error or any problem in ex in running of this calculator program. It's working fine but it is giving us a proper message that what has happened and you can continue this cal using this calculator after clearing this message, right? So I'll just clear this message that is happened. So I'll go ahead what division I have to do or in the sense, I'll you know just show you this again to divide it by zero proper message. We can continue the calculator. Similarly, our program, we can make such thing that we can handle this exception and display a proper message and continue our program. Continue our program, which is called exception handling, which is called exception handling. So it is what is the process is that find the problem that is hit the exception inform that an error has occurred that is throw an exception receive that error information catch the exception take corrective action which is called handle the exception right four step right. so how it happens the basic concept of exception handling or throwing an exception and catching an exception so we're gonna write uh, any code that we feel can generate an exception we're going to put in a block called a try block. So we'll make a try block. In a try block, we are going to put the statements or the codes there. An exception can occur. Fine. And right after that, we need to have some catch block. If an exception generated, the exception will be thrown and the catch block is going to catch that exception take the proper take the proper action and then after that it continue the execution fine so in the sense we need to have a try block 
then a catch statement, then we can continue our program. Fine. So in our program, for example, over here, okay, we feel that there can be a exception here in this code. Okay, so we're gonna take this, put this code inside this try block. Okay, and we're gonna write a catch block here. catch block where we are going to take a proper action. For example, a message that division by zero occur, division by zero occur, or whatever the message, for example, division by zero is not allowed, cannot divide a number by zero, anything, any such thing, okay? And then we can continue our, with our work, okay? Uh, let me define C here so that uh, we can display the C at the end. What is the value of C? Fine. C is zero, but we are trying to do some exception here. That is an equation as C is equal to B plus A, then B minus B minus A. And then if there is any exception, we'll be caught here and we'll continue the program. So in this case, we don't find that the program stops in between. Okay, so let us just run this program and make sure that it's working. Fine. Now you see that output screen, we have A, B, and we say that there is division by zero occur and the value of C is zero. Right now, if you look at this, a b is displayed here. Then it comes here in the try block. Exception occurs, which is thrown. Here, here it is and hit the exception. Then the exception is thrown. The catch will catch that is the exception. Okay, and the action what we have taken is just to display a message, just to display a message. Or we can take some other action. Let's say, for example, we just say C is equal to B plus A divided by two. In case if there is an exception, divide the C. C will be B plus A divided by two. Fine. So it ha if it happens, we'll do this action and we'll just you know display the value of C. Okay. Now we can see here that there is an exception occur. So C is B plus A, which is 20 by 2, 10. So it is here, the exception is hitting an exception here. Fine. An ex exception is thrown out of the try block. The next catch or the matching catch will take that exception, take the action what to be done. And then after that, continue the execution of the program and the program terminates normally, fine. So this is what we call it as an exception handling, fine. Now we can have multiple catch statement for a try block because there can be a number of exceptions generated. It is not always division by zero. There can be division by zero, index out of bound, okay, uh, index out of range, or any, if there is any memory uh, error, any different type of exception can occur, right? So for example, if you look into this program, we have three catch statements here. We have arithmetic exception. So if there is any problem with the arithmetic, with the operators and all, arithmetic exception, which is division by zero, for example. We have index out of range exception, which means if we are trying to access an index of the array, which is not there here, how, what is the index zero one? We are saying A2, which is wrong, right? So this throws what kind of exception? Index out of range exception. So it comes here to the index out of range exception and display the message array index error, okay? We also have array type mismatch exception this is another kind of exception. Okay, if we are trying to assign to the array some wrong data, right? It is an integer array, we're trying to assign some wrong data. So it is an exception. 
okay now different type of catch so we can see that for a try we can have a number of catch it is not only one catch two catch we can have a number of catch with different type of exceptions if we are expecting different type of exceptions can be can occur in this block then we can include different type of it. so the matching catch will be considered so in this case we are trying to access this a uh, a of 2 which is not there right so it is index and out of bound exception right so we can have a multiple catches statement uh, for a single try block so this is a try catch a statement and how we can handle the exceptions in c sharp uh, finally here it is we have a statement called finally block or finally statement this finally block is uh, the, a block which is executed at the end of the program right so c sharp support another statement called finally statement that can be used to handle an exception that is not caught by any of the previous catch statement in the sense if we write catch statements which is not matching with the exception which has been generated so in that case the finally block is taken the finally block can be used to handle exception generated within a try block it may be added immediately after a try block or after the catch blocks when a finally block is defined the program is guaranteed to execute regardless of how control leaves the try whether it is due to normal termination or due to an exception occur or due to a jump statement as a result we can use it to perform certain housekeeping operations such as closing file releasing system resources you know destroying the objects and all right so finally is at the end will be executed in at the end of the program and we can keep the finally in case like if there is no catch with the try we can keep the finally if there is no catch matching with the exception generated finally can be executed and uh, we can keep the finally block or a finally statement to release the files to release the resources which has been used right to destroy the objects release the system memory and all fine we, so we can include the finally block as if like a catch with the try block Right. So this is all what we have here for you in exception handling. So or all what we have seen in this uh, small topic is that what is debugging two types of error, compile time error, runtime error. What is an exception? How the C sharp handle the exception in four statements that is hit an exception, throw an exception, catch an exception, take an action, which is by using a try catch statements one try can have multiple catch and we can add a finally block at the end of the uh, try or catch right so this is well all you have here uh, in this uh, topic if you have any questions please go ahead before we move to the next discussion any questions Thank you. Fine. So it's all done. Okay. Some of the one of the student is asking about uh, something to discuss in the TMA. We have some question. He said. Yes, it's me. Yes, Mr. Please go ahead. Can you open uh, the file on the screen? The TMA. Which file? Uh, the team is a question one in the LMS. The question file, you mean? Yes, yes. Okay. I heard the file, I don't know where I kept it. see it here what you want to know in this one is there any specific question uh, yes i have a question 
question uh, question number one, in part one, and 